All right, I'm going to check out this car, CW380, today. Um, so this is completely factory the way it comes, except for the fact that somebody added Talon grips to this. Uh, so this is kind of like one of the original pocket pistols. Uh, these have been out since the 90s, I believe. There's your sights right there. Um, back then, pocket pistols like the original LCP, for example, Taurus TCP or TLC, it's TCL, something like that. I'll put it up there. I remember there was a Taurus similar to this. Um, generally, with little pocket pistols like this back in the day, uh, you really didn't have much, no, nothing in the way of a proper sighting system. So as small as these are here, this was a vastly improved sighting system, especially with the dots, because the other ones pretty much just had slide collared little nubs that you couldn't even make out so um they're extremely narrow i believe it's three quarters of an inch which i don't think it includes that but it might i mean i have real small hands and this is like the width of my freaking index finger here very very thin um it's actually smaller than an lcp for example let me show you that real quick so here's the car over that and they're pretty much the same top to bottom but the car is a little bit shorter okay up top here try not to scratch these up there's from up top so the car is really freaking small um, but with that being said and like I said this has these talon wraparounds but even without these talons I've handled these in the past before brand new uh, from the factory I always wanted to get one of these and try out I never got to till now uh, it was a lot easier to hold on to than the original LCP and that Taurus thing I mentioned too. I never personally had uh, any experience with the kel so I can't speak for that because I'm sure somebody will bring up those old kel 380s. Um, but yeah, so it's actually smaller than the LCPs. Um, the, this here is a 2.75 inch barrel, which should be the same as the single stack LCPs, whereas this is a 2.58 inch barrel, so just a little bit shorter there. And I was going on here uh, about the weight, saying that the car was heavier than the LCP Max, uh, but apparently it's not. It's actually a little bit lighter. It's 10.2 ounces compared to 10.6, so it must just feel heavier. The uh, slide on it is definitely heavier than the slide on the LCP, uh, so it gives a more top-heavy feel. Um, so I guess that's why it felt heavier to me, even though it's actually a few fractions of an ounce lighter. So it's a 6 plus 1 capacity. Uh, I'm going to quit yammering on here and see how it shoots. We got these mag techs here, round nose, and I have some Winchesters too, which I believe are flat nose. Now with that being said, this is a fairly unfired firearm. I, it looks brand new. I know the guy that had it said that he only uh, put two mags through it and i don't think whoever had it before him shot it very much because it looks like a brand new pistol on the inside so very low round count and the reason i mentioned that is because i have heard that some of these cars have a break-in period so what that means is uh you may experience uh jams and whatnot until enough rounds have been ran through a pistol for it to be broken in typically not an issue with modern firearms but again i don't know the age of this so we will see. I will start out with these Magtech. They are 95 grain round nose, as I stated. These Winchesters are also 95 grain and are, in fact, flat nose. So if it runs these round nose good, we'll see what happens with the flat nose because a lot of the little 380s will cough up on these flat nose that get caught on the feed ramp. But we'll see what happens. Uh, one last thing before I get my, any further ahead of myself here. Uh, I forgot to mention this is a double action only. Uh, trigger some people want that in little pocket pistols and uh, carry guns some people don't um, I can definitely see the benefit for a actual pocket pistol while you shouldn't keep anything in your pocket to catch the trigger um, It's definitely each easier uh, Reaching in to draw out of your pocket in a high stress situation to accidentally pull the trigger So double action only is a uh, good uh, insurance against that with that being said, the double action on this, and this gun is clear, it's not very heavy at all, and it's very smooth, okay? And I need another hand to re-do uh, all that crap. Um, but yeah, it, it doesn't travel, I mean, it does travel far, but not as far as some. Like, 
I don't know. I don't want to state anything and be wrong here, but I've definitely had further travel on double action than this. Definitely had heavier than this. This is on the lighter side of what I've experienced for double action. And it's super, super smooth. I mean, it, I don't, the trigger face is real smooth, so that helps with that some too. But like, I feel no grit, no edges, no nothing. It's just super smooth until it breaks. So, of the double action triggers I've shot, this has got to be one of the nicest ones, at least in my opinion. All right, so these will be my first shots with this gun. Um, I'm just going to do a little six shot pattern down there on that target and see what happens. Well, it didn't want to feed on me there. I might not have pulled it back far enough. Get that one out and try that again. At that time, I probably just didn't pull it back with enough authority and let it snap. Uh, I did notice the recoil spring in this is a lot tighter than other 380s I've shot, so it does take a little oomph to get it back all the way, so that's probably what I did. I probably short stroked it and didn't pull it back all the way, which is why it didn't feed properly. Um, so, and like I said, this appears to be a fairly low round count, so that will likely soften up with time. Uh, caught myself on the recoil anticipation there. I always do that with a new gun before I get used to it. Well, that and the double actions always get me too because the, the trigger's so long and heavy. When, that, uh, goes, when it goes click but nothing goes off, it always causes me to pull. So like I said, those are my very first shots with it and I wasn't trying to be accurate or anything and I was kind of rapid firing and that's really good now this one holes from a 25 watt six which i'm about to review um so if you count an extra hole that's why but these are all that 380 and yeah i was just holding right in the center in there so it looks like uh, you know typical six o'clock hold there that's really good <laughs> especially for my first shots i mean we're standing back about seven yards there and even with that's double action man no problem like i said that uh Real nice double action trigger. I, I probably shot that almost as good as I do my, my uh, LCP Max. Check, uh, you can see there's one in the mag there. Well, it's loaded up. I wanted to test, see uh, slide release, see if it'll feed. Yep, okay. All right, so that one did not hold open on the last shot. So sometimes that can be part of the break in too. If that spring's too stiff, the slide won't travel all the way back to catch that tang on the mag or however it holds open on the last shot. So that might have been why. And generally, you can combat that by using uh, hotter, you know, defense loads instead of that practice stuff. <laughs> Where that practice stuff might not hold open, the hotter rounds will. <laughs> I was all impressed with myself because I hit that little one and then I missed the big one twice. I don't think I got the mag in all the way. <laughs> I keep missing that big one when I come back to it after I hit the little one. Go figure. 
All right, let's try this again. There you go. Didn't hold open again. You see how hard I got to pull it to get it to lock open. So it's just because that spring's too tight. So it's not allowing it sometimes to travel back far enough to catch and hold open. Like I said, you can combat that uh, with a little bit hotter ammunition. So let's do, I think that's it. Yep, let's do six plus one this time. Like how you would carry it. So there's one in the chamber and six in the magazine. All right. So that's why I mentioned the break in period in the beginning of the video because. It looked like low round count, and like I said, you can have certain malfunctions uh, because of that until that spring wears in. One way you can combat that, leave it locked open like this for like a week, and it'll soften up that spring a little bit. But you know, the important thing is the gun is functioning and cycling, so that's what you would be concerned about because if it jams up on you while you're shooting uh, an attacker that could get you killed so the only thing that we're experiencing here is sometimes the slide doesn't lock back so like i said after break in it will or you can leave it locked open for a week or even a month if you want soften that spring a little or just use hotter loads which most of the time your self-defense ammunition is a little hotter by the way guys this is a gong gallery um by shooting target seven there's a link in the description for their website. You can go check out everything they have. Uh, this thing right here is a double-ended gong hanger. So if you hit it enough times consecutively, top to bottom, back and forth, it'll eventually flip around, which is pretty cool. Um, so like I said, link in the description if you want to check their stuff out. Also got links for everything I use in the video, like this target stand here and even those targets if you want to get yourself one or some. Um, so now I have these targets here set up. Just confirmed with my range finder, which there's also a link in the description for that. Uh, 15 yards, so this is double of what they say a typical self-defense scenario is at 7 yards, so we're at double the distance of, of that, and we'll see what I can do here. I don't know why I uh, kept missing the bigger one. I guess the transition. All right, so I don't know if you can see the little nub sticking out there. It's out of battery, so it's not forward all the way. Now it is, so it doesn't seem to like the feed from the slide release. Best just to pull it back as hard as you can and let go, it would seem. Yeah, I can make the hits, but if you try to speed up at all, it's definitely a little bit more challenge with one of these pocket pistols. Um, I gotta say, I probably do a little better with my max. Let's find out. Well, that's interesting. Hey, maybe the max doesn't hold open on the last shot. I don't remember. It's been forever since I shot this thing. I haven't shot that in a few months. It's been in uh, my pocket the whole time, so I figured I'd pull it out and do a little comparison there, and it's good to shoot it because it hasn't been shot in a while. First shot was off because I had a completely different sight system on that. It took me a second, and I had to remember where to hold with that one. So 
But I mean, it is an unfair advantage because this one has much better grip and a wider grip, so it's easier to hold on to there, and it has much better sights on it uh, than the car there. But not much faster with it. So I'll put the rest of these Winchesters with that flat nose through that car, see if we have any issues with it jamming up while firing. Well, it fed, so that's good. Hey, it held open too. Might like these Winchesters more. Held open again, and uh, I'm doing better now because I found out most of my shots are going to the left a little. So this rear sight probably needs drifted a little. It's shooting off to the left for me. So now I'm shooting it great now that I figured that out, and I'm aiming off to the right a little bit. All right, so for the last mag, there's one in the chamber and six in the mag like you would carry it. And uh, I'm going to do a little bit of rapid fire here. Held open again, so those Winchesters are probably a little bit hotter round, so it's locking open every time. See, like I said, you just might need more recoil so it locks open, or that spring's got to get broken in. So I just missed a whole bunch, but I just wanted to rapid fire it to see if it would uh, handle it, basically, and it, it did. So we are not having any feeding issues, so that's good. I want to come over in the shade here. Uh, it's a little bit warm out today, but also... My camera keeps stopping on me because it says uh, camera's too hot to record. So I got to get out of the sun there. But anyways, that's going to do her there. So like I said, I had heard that these had a little bit of break-in period. So the feeding would probably get smoother over time with more rounds. As I said, you can just lock it back and leave it locked back for a week or a month or whatever. You know, just lock it back uh, when you're not using it for the first few weeks. And that's going to help break in that spring too but not nearly as much as firing it will um, but as I stated um, it cycled reliably so that's what's important you don't want it getting jammed up while you're uh, having to, def to defend your life and we did not have that issue so broken in or not that was not a problem the only issue we had was well I guess my own fault didn't pull it back far enough the first time so it didn't feed um, well, it didn't seem to like the slide release as much for feeding all those would loosen up over time, um, but just with those mag techs, it wouldn't lock open. But as I was stating in the beginning, hotter rounds will lock it open, and well, the Winchester proved that. So yeah, that'll do her. I gotta say, um, knowing that it'll get better with time and more rounds down range, I really like this little thing. The ergos are great. Um, it feels great in my hand. I mean, I have smaller hands, but. It feels, uh, I've shot a lot of little pocket 380s, and this this is definitely one of my favorites as far as ergonomics go, grip, and uh, the sights on it. So I really like these, and it didn't let me down today. So like I said, a few of those bugs work out over time. But yeah, i uh glad I finally got to try one of these out. I really like them. And like I said, that trigger for double action, that's got to be one of the best double action triggers, at least in my opinion. So if you think about one of these, uh, I like it.